All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire at Home. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. We want to welcome everybody here um, to our online Bible study tonight. Um, you can call it Thursday Thursdays. You can call it whatever you want to call it tonight. That we just want to get into the Word of God. We want to encourage you. We want to strengthen your faith. Um, I'm going to deal with some things tonight. So before I get into that, I want you to go ahead and click your shares, likes, and all of that. Hit the, hit the subscribe buttons if you're on YouTube. Um, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and share this video with somebody right now. Put it on your social media platforms. Invite somebody to come in so that they can be encouraged and they can be strengthened. Um, one of the things I shared, and before I, before I get into that, I want to go ahead and pray real quick. I want us to get into it tonight. I want to just dive right into this. Um, because time is of the essence. And I believe that God wants some things to be accomplished. He wants them to be done. Um, but God also wants us to reconnect with him, even through prayer, through fellowship with him, time in his presence, time in the word, because God and his word are one. And so we can spend time with God by spending time in his word and reading the scriptures and getting to know God's attributes, his characteristics, but it's nothing like spending time with him in his presence. It's nothing like spending time with him in prayer to build yourself up. And so I'm just really feeling that right now. I'm really feeling just a, a time of reconnection. Many times we go through things throughout the week. Through, we go through the hustle and the bustle. And it's like God is like, I just want, to, want you to enter in. I want you to be refreshed. I want you to recalibrate. I want you to be strengthened. And so I believe that the wisdom of God is going to flow right now. I believe things are going to come out right now, even as I'm talking. So let's just begin to pray. Father, we just thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you, Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think through my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge and good understanding of the word. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you, Father, for your abounding grace. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so we just bless you always. And Father, we thank you that every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is open and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And so we magnify you. We glorify you. and We honor you for it now. In the name of Jesus, we do cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration. And Father, we magnify your name this day. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that every ear, every ear is open, ready. Thank you, Father, for divinely speaking to us, strengthening us and helping us to grow and to build and to manifest in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, y'all, I know I've been talking about some things over the past few weeks. We've been dealing with this subject of grace um, and dealing with God's grace. And I remember I shared something this past Sunday, I believe, um, that I was going to continue today with um, going through the book of Romans, Romans 7 and 8. And so I was kind of debating that for a minute because... I wanted to make sure, though, because this is something I want to make sure I'm constantly working on is consistency. And I'm making sure I work on keeping my word. And so sometimes, you know, and I'm just this is a little tidbit for somebody out there. This might bless you. This might help you. It may not. But I want to share this. I think it's a learning lesson um, that even with that part of me was like, OK, I wanted to continue with that because I said that I would and I wanted to keep my word. And so I didn't want to say, OK, and just be randomly spitting out stuff, saying it, but not following through with it. Uh, at the same time, if the spirit of God brings something else up in my spirit, I want to kind of give leeway for the Holy Spirit to flow through me to share what he wants to share in that moment. And so I'm going to share some things. And uh, one of the things um, and I want to say that so I may get to Romans seven. Um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that I get out what I feel like maybe I need to say in this moment. Uh, one of the things is I just, um, in reconnecting with God and connecting with God and building yourself up in these end times that we're dealing with, 
God wants us to understand his grace like never before, his unmerited, undeserved favor or the unrestrained or God's, you know, like we call grace, God's unmerited abounding provision of the unrestrained operation of God's infinite love through Jesus Christ on the behalf of man, especially for those who depend on him. So God's unrestrained love, it, it begins to manifest his abounding provision. So even with that, I'm expecting that there are going to be times of extreme favor that God is about to release over his people, that there are going to be times not about to. We, we always say that God's about to do this, but now it's more than that. God is doing this now. And you'll experience, if you can believe this, that God's infinite love is going to open doors for you that no man can shut. And so sometimes we feel as though the, the door won't open unless we're fully ready. And some of you got to be ready now. You're going to have to hurry up and get ready because some doors are opening that if you are not ready and the door opens, you're going to have to hurry up in a rush to get yourself in position or get yourself ready to walk through that door before the door closes and the window closes. So I think it's going to be very important now that we spend time in the presence of God to hear the Holy Spirit who is going to show us things to come so that we can be ready for those opportunities when they show up. See, when preparation meets opportunity, you're going to see success. So go ahead now, get in that place of seclusion and privacy where you're hearing God for yourself and for your life. And so at this time, you cannot more than ever, you can't compare with others. You have to lock into what God is telling you to do. And I get it. We celebrate our brothers and sisters that are doing big things and we we pump them up. But God needs for you to kind of not be so concerned about what everybody else is doing right now and do what I told you to do. And so if there's something in particular that God is stressing um, for you to do or he's really honing in for you to do, you're going to have to say, OK, let me give some really good attention to this. Let me block out every distraction, even if I schedule and be intentional. This is this word that keeps coming back up. It's intentionality. Let me be intentional about removing distractions so that it limits the distractions. And that way I can sharpen my focus. If I can sharpen my focus on the thing that I believe that I believe I need to develop in, then all of a sudden my hearing begins to open up to see things and to hear things that I need to do to develop in that area. So with this, God wants you to reconnect with him through prayer. He wants you to cast vision. He wants you to get, um, he wants you to write the vision, make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. What is it that you feel as though God is leading you to do? Now, un until you have your own vision, it's, it's important that you connect with a vision. So, even though some of you that are part of this ministry, okay, we have given you an overall view of the vision and things God has called us to do. And so there are things where I'm going to begin to refresh that and begin to share it again so that you can at least see that, you know what, maybe my vision, the vision that God has given for me or the thing God has called for me to do is to assist others with their vision and to be a component within a greater vision, a bigger vision, a larger vision to get the job done. Um, and I believe that God sometimes says, and, and the spirit of God has really laid this on my heart more and more, that it's like, okay, you gotta get certain things accomplished because there are other people's uh, assignment is attached to yours. And so if you don't fulfill what you're supposed to do, you'll never meet or connect with the people who I call to be alongside with you. Or now it'll frustrate those that are with you because they're not functioning in their purpose is because you're not functioning in yours. And so it's very important that people begin to come together and God wants to reignite because if you don't walk in your purpose over a period of time, the desire begins to dwindle down. And so now all of of a sudden, not only does the frustration remain, but then even the drive to get certain things done begins to lower your expectation lowers. And so what you walk in is complacency. And God does not want you to be complacent in these last days. He says, I need you to be sharper than ever before 
to fulfill the thing that I told for you to fulfill and to help and to assist and to give it everything that you have in this final push, in this final outcome. And so God is saying, I'm going to refresh, revive, rebuild, restore, reignite. And so it'll cause things to happen like you've never seen it. So I want you to to, to be mindful of that. And now along with this, God is saying, I want you to go to higher ground. And in order to go to higher ground, you must number one, have a change of perspective. You need to have a change of perspective. How do you see things now? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be transformed, Paul said, by the entire renewal of your mind. This is why we are even talking about God's grace, so that now your mind can be changed so that you don't walk as a self-righteous Christian and condemning not only yourself, but condemning others. And so if you change your perspective, it'll begin to change your outlook, which will change your habits and your actions towards people that you come into contact with and people that God called for you to minister to, you won't dismiss any longer because you're not looking down upon them. And now God can use that person just like he's using you. And so God is saying, I need your eyes to be open and your ears to be hope open to receive this goodness, this grace and mercy so that you can extend it towards others. For some of you, it's been a long time. For some of you, it's been a thing where based off of your mistakes, you've disqualified yourself. In your mind, you've disqualified yourself because you think God has disqualified you based off of how you've lived and the mistakes that you've made in the past. And so I'm here to speak in the prophesy to you now and to declare and to decree that your mistakes have been forgiven given by God through the shed blood of Christ. And so you need to accept that forgiveness and not only forgive others, but you need to start forgiving yourself for mismanagement, for bad stewardship, for procrastination, for doubt and unbelief and not moving forward. And so God says, I need for you to change your perspective because there is still time for you to get certain things accomplished and done. If you just wake up now and begin to have steady movement towards the thing that you are called to do. That goes into number two thing. In order to gain higher ground or to go higher, number one, you gotta have a change of perspective. Number two, you gotta have a conviction of the pathway, a conviction of the way that God is calling you to go. Some things I'm just telling you, you won't see everything you need to do. You just need to start with the next thing God told you to do. Whatever it is, what's the first thing he said? Do that. And once you start doing that, you'll begin to see the second thing. And so while you even working on the first thing, sometimes he'll show you the second thing to keep the momentum and to keep the progress going. So instead of you waiting to get everything that's attached to it, like get the whole plan. God gives you a glimpse. He gives you a vision. He allows you to see some things so that you can start moving towards that pathway. And then three, have confidence in the process. You're going to have to trust God in the process. Whatever process he's taking you through, you're going to have to trust him like you've never trusted him before. And so even as you're writing the vision, making it plain, setting up the meeting, setting up the appointments, preparing yourself for increase, setting up appointments with the financial advisor, setting up appointments with your real estate your realtor. Um, if you got to call the, uh, the mortgage company and get the money ready and start going through the, do whatever you got to do and don't get frustrated in the midst of the process because what Satan would try to do is get you frustrated and flustered and get you to speak against what God is causing you to move towards because you're frustrated in the midst of the process. And so you're going to have to keep your confidence. You have to listen. Listen, don't cast away therefore your confidence. That's in Hebrews 10, 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. You have to remain confident. There may be times that what you're moving towards, there may be sometimes doubt that comes to your head, but don't let it get in your heart. You know in your heart, this is what God told you to do. You know in your heart, this is what you saw yourself doing, and you have a conviction about doing that thing, but then sometimes in your head, doubt tries to creep in, and things try to creep in, thoughts creep in to try to say, hey, you can't make it. You're too old to do it. You're too young to do it. You haven't had enough education to do it. No, don't worry about that because God will get you where you need to go. He'll have you see what you need to see. He'll have you hear what you need to hear. Just start the movement, start the process and start the progress. When you start the process, you'll begin to have progress.
Okay. And so now God wants you to do this. He wants you to understand that your success is going to be found in your daily agenda. What are you doing? Work on your productivity like you've never worked on it before. Schedule your day. Have meetings with yourself to see, first of all, who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? What is it that you're looking to accomplish? What is it that you're looking to achieve? And then set the tone. Begin to prioritize what's the most important thing to get done for that day. What's the first thing that I need to do? Set it. Whatever gets scheduled gets done. Whatever gets scheduled gets done. So whatever you begin to schedule, start scheduling some things, scheduling meetings, scheduling private time, scheduling time to read, to listen, however you need to get the information in you. Some of you don't like to read. Some of you may be people that I personally don't necessarily always like to read everything, but sometimes I might get an audio book or I may listen, watch a video, or I may do something else to get the information in me. Whichever is the best way. That's the beauty of today with technology. There are many ways you can get the information in you, but I still like to read because it exercises my brain to a degree where even word recognition and things of that nature. I still like to do that. But sometimes, hey, if you got to go to sleep listening, you say, OK, every day I'm at least get one hour or 30 minutes of information in me about the thing that I'm looking to develop in. Whatever it is, start building yourself up so that not only though get the knowledge, but have a plan or have within you. Yeah, the plan to say or the 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 the, the wherewithal to say, I'm going to act out on what I'm learning. I'm going to put it to work and I'm going to exercise this principle that I'm learning even over a period of time so that now it can become a habit in my life. So if I do this action over 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, I want it to now become a part of me. When I got back into exercising and start going back to the gym, it only took me about two to three days for my body to even respond without even having the alarm clock go off. Why? Because before I went to sleep, I set it in my mind and heart that I'm going to wake up and I'm going to get up out of the bed and go to the gym. So when it did, when I did that, something went off in me. It's like everything else aligned within me when I made a decision to do the thing that I needed to do. And so then as you begin to prioritize your day, what's the most important thing you need to get done? And then what's the least important from where there's the top five things you got to accomplish for the day. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Whatever you can do now, do it now. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Do it now. Mark it off your list. And so now watch this. Before you play, you need to be productive. Before you have enjoyment, have delayed gratification. Before I go get the thing that I want to get, if I want to eat the cookie or the brownie, let me make sure I put in 20 to 30 minutes of cardio work before I even say I'm going to eat this or I'm going to take this on. Whatever it is. Some of you may say, well, no, I don't need to be eating it anyway. Okay. Set it aside and say, OK, once a week I'll be able to eat this or that. And the rest of the time I'm doing this, whatever it is, you know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. So it's up to you to begin to set that. There are many things out there, resources to help you as to how you can get better in different areas. Now, three things I want another. This is another set of things I want you even in your agenda um, to be successful at what you want to do. You need to number one. And we always talk about that. We always have these steps to success, things of that nature. I'm just giving you some pointers, some things you can just do for right now. So tonight, right now, I'm just giving you some things that you can take, that you can write down, apply it, and begin to walk it out. Number one, find out the will of God. What is it about the will of God? Find out the will of God. It's the purpose-driven life. You got to find your purpose. You have to find your purpose. Well, pastor, how do you define? How can I find my purpose? Like, what are the things? What comes alive in you? What's the dream or the goal or the vision that you can't shake? What is the thing that keeps even as you're quiet, even as you're still? What's the thing that's coming up in your heart to do? Even find things that you're naturally good at. The thing that you can do the best with the least amount of effort. Sometimes those are things that you are just naturally gifted at. Whatever you're naturally gifted at, that can be a part and tie you into this is my calling, my purpose for my life. And so, you know, even as I was um, 
I was in elementary, I mean, not elementary, middle school and high school. One of the things I used to want to be was an architect. And um, I had already I had applied to a college that um, dealt with that and, um, and all of that. And I didn't get accepted into that college. But even I went into a drafting class while I was in high school. And because I like to draw, I like to design, I like to build things. Even to this day, I, I admire great structures and things of that nature. But I also saw that with the kingdom of God and what God called me to be in the kingdom, the body of Christ is to be a builder, is to be a builder of people, is to be a builder of systems, is to be a builder of structures, of things of that nature. So I still see that area of building design. I like sitting down. I like formulating. I like writing things down. I like, see, if you even see my notes, it's the way I just naturally organize them. I wasn't taught how to do it. I just began to do it this way and organize to a degree I was taught to help hone in my skills. But there are just certain things I'm just naturally good at. What are the things that you're naturally good at? I was naturally good at taking points off of a paper and being able to expound on them. And I realized God has given me this ability. And to me, it was just natural. But to others, they begin to see hey, man, you're really good at this. You're gifted to do this, to take words, to be able to explain yourself and to be able to share your thoughts and ideas. And so, you know, things of that nature. There were times I was more comfortable talking in front of a crowd than dealing with some people one on one. It was just, and that would seem weird that you would be more comfortable in a in the front of a crowd. Give me a mic in a crowd. Man, I am at home. That's just part of my nature. It's part of my makeup. So I know that God has called me to speak to people. He's called me to be a motivator. He's called me to be a teacher in the body of Christ. He's called me to the prophetic office to now see things ahead of time. These are things, gifts and abilities that God has given me that I begin to identify. And now that I've seen it exercised in my life over a period of time, I can confidently say I'm called in these particular areas. Now, there may be some other things down the road God will have me to go into, but even as of now, as long as I know what I'm supposed to do now, I'm good. See, I can't worry about tomorrow right now. It'll take care of itself. But what does he have me doing now? What's the assignment right now? Okay. Be faithful to what he's telling you to do now. Excuse me. Now, once you understand the will of God, confer no longer with flesh and blood. What do I mean by that? Stop talking to a bunch of people about what God told you to do. If he told you to do it, do it. Now, if you go to people to ask, OK, what are some ways in which I can do it to express it or to manifest it? If you haven't received anything, a particular way to do it, there may be many different ways you can do it or ideas of the way to be creative with it. But the thing that he ultimately told you to do, listen, don't go ask. Do you think this God? Do you think this that unless you're not confident? It's like, OK, what did you get? How did you get it? You know, do you believe this is what the Lord is telling you to do? OK, if this is what the Lord is telling you to do, who am I to say, no, you're not supposed to do it. Now, sometimes it can be timing or, like I said, how you do it. But now from that standpoint of what you're supposed to do. Yeah, because the what, the why or the what, the how and the when. Those are the three questions. What are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to do it? When are you supposed to do it? The what, that's that thing that God gives you that you can be solidified in, okay? Now, he may tell you, sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves, but he may say, okay, now you can ask people as to ways that they've been successful at it, but unless, you know, God, but you gotta be open and flexible to the Holy Spirit giving it to you even a different way because there is no one way per se that you can do it, that you have to do it. So that you, I want you to be open to all of the possibilities of what God has for you. Then this final, this third thing, get it done at all costs. That is, it's, it's just that simple. Give it everything you got. You know when you're giving it your all. You know when you're doing what you're supposed to do. So if you know that you're not giving it your best shot and your best effort, begin to see, okay, how can I manage my day, manage my life to start putting in the work that I need to put in to get certain things accomplished? And for some, even as you begin to get older, that's why it's good to get some things done while you're young, while you have the energy and the strength to do it. But God can also say, OK, maybe you're in that position where you pass a certain you're not in the prime of your youth. But some of you may be right in the prime of your youth. It may be somebody you had that in between place. You feel like you almost had a crossover 
in your life that, you know, you're not as young as you used to be, but you know, you still got many years ahead of you that God can say, OK, I can do what I can do with you where you currently are. Even if you feel as though that you're in the last phase of your life or you're in the last stage of your life or you may be I don't care how old, you may have 20, 60 more years left to live. And so, listen, you shooting for the 120. And so, but at the same time, you realize even though the outward man perishes, that the inward man is being renewed day by day. So you do understand, though, that things that you probably did in your 20s, you won't necessarily do in your hundreds. But we know that. So now you want to make sure that you maximize where you are. How can I maximize my vision and calling at the stage and the season that I'm in and God give me wisdom and strength to get it done. I, I truly believe this. I've seen it in scripture. And so listen, if I have president presidents in the word for it, I'm going to release my faith for it. Even as Samson, when his eyes were plucked out and his vision was lost. And then, listen, he felt as though everything was lost. He cried out to God and said, Lord, strengthen me, anoint me one more time. And the Bible says that Samson slew more in his last session before he died than all of his life in one moment. So he had more done in the final moments of his life than he ever accomplished in his entire life. And so God can begin to strengthen you. I mean, the spirit of might can come upon you even as it did Elijah in the book of first Kings, where he began to beat the king to the entrance of Jezreel because it said the hand of the Lord came upon him and he ran. I believe that anointing, that's one of the facets of the Holy Spirit who abides in us, that that anointing can come upon our physical bodies to quicken our mortal bodies and to make them alive. But it also may require our cooperation through diet and exercise, proper sleep, stop stressing yourself out, casting your care on God. Stop worrying about stuff you can't control in that moment. You can't change other people's minds about you. They can only change their mind about you. All you can do is demonstrate who you are in Christ. And so if you like me or if you don't like me, it's not going to stop me from doing what God called for me to do and to do it successfully and with excellence. And so now I want you to, um, along with these areas, I want you to also have a burning desire to succeed. You, you got to get that desire again. Some of you may have guys like, okay, I'm just tired at this point. I'm ready. I'm like at that seeing your mentality. You're at that retirement stage in your mind. But when the God with us, as long as you are alive, there's a call that's there. Whatever God will have you to do, you just may be in a different season of your life, but there's still a call, a purpose and a plan that God has for you, even while you're still here. So no matter what stage you're in, lock into that. You may say my purpose is to help build others, is to help strengthen others, is to help support others. Hey, do it with everything you got. And so while you're doing that, I believe as you being a blessing to others, God is going to come and increase you and your household and that you'll experience prosperity and success in all of its capacity and fulfillment, that your latter days will be better than your former days in Jesus name. You're in your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure that you will fulfill and accomplish the will of God for your life and begin to also have a strong work ethic. You got to begin. There's some people who ain't afraid of work. The problem is, is not that you are, you don't like to work. You just haven't been working in some cases in the right areas, in the right lanes. You work to support other people's vision. But have you even put that type of effort into your own vision? What is it? The thing that God has called you to build. Now, there are some of you, like I said, sometimes you're called to be the piece of a puzzle Some, somewhere or somebody else's thing. But the vision for your life is to support others. I've, I've come across people like that. They said our goal is to help other people do what God called them to do. And so in that, that means they have to be built up and they have to be developed and have certain skill sets to even assist and to help others in doing what they do with excellence. And so we got to make sure with that strong work, work ethic is going to have to be that spirit of excellence, but also learning how to be coachable, how to be teachable, how to allow yourself to receive wisdom to get the job done. So God wants you to do this and he wants you to grow. He wants you to be productive. This is your reaping season, but this is a time. See, people get excited. And I remember hearing this, somebody say this, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm rolling, um, that there, there, there are people who shout about harvest time, 
But if you haven't been, a, and the person who was talking about this actually grew up on a farmer in farming. And so they realized that, wait a minute, they didn't get so excited when they heard somebody preaching about harvest season because they knew harvest time meant work. That means you had to work like you never worked before. It was easier to plant the seed than it was to reap the harvest. And so when harvest time shows up, that means you can't have the leisure. Say for some of you, it means you can't have the same type of leisure time you used to. You have, you're going to have to plan your rest and have your times of Sabbath and your rest and all of that. But it's like, no, you can't mess around the way you used to mess around. You can, no, your, your, your day has to be outlined in some cases you got to be di more disciplined in your harvest season because that means now more work coming your way and now you're gonna have to learn okay i gotta build my team i gotta know how to delegate i gotta know how to manage this i gotta know how to have my business in order i gotta make sure that the vision is straight i gotta make sure i'm getting myself straight that i have my me time i gotta make sure that the people that are working with me that they are good that i have the structures in place that i develop a culture i gotta see all of that comes with harvest all of that comes with you building and growing and so you got to be ready and some people don't like the price tag to the success that they are praying for and that they're designed because they're looking at somebody else do it and doing it well but they don't realize the pressure or the stresses that come with it watch this and your oh man oh this is good help me holy ghost to verbalize it your your stress your huh your structure should handle the stress or the weight of the vision the structure that you have so should support it, the weight of it. What is the thing God has called you to do? If it's big, you need big structure and big foundation to handle it so that it doesn't crush you. If you don't have the right weight in place, the right structure in place, the vision can crush you. And this is where people say comments like, don't let the blessing turn into a curse. Don't let these things. So you got to make sure that you're able to handle what it is you're walking in. That's why it's good to be coachable and have mentors in your life and people that you can talk to that even help you along the way that's been where you are in certain areas. Even if you're a trailblazer in certain areas, sometimes there are some things that are just needed across the board, no matter what you're called to do. There are certain structures or certain things you need to have in your life in place, no matter what it is you do. And so we want to make sure that we structure ourselves for success and health. And part of it is learning how to plan your year. If you know there are certain things you need to accomplish, start planning it out. Plan your success. Plan things to work out for your good. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. So even if you need to plan your vacations, you do that. And so that if you plan it ahead of time, whatever you plan is what you prioritize. And so whatever is priority to you, go ahead and plan it and put it in slots and be intentional. Well, I want to be spontaneous. OK, you can have levels of spontaneity and have levels and moments of being spontaneous. But to get to a certain level, if you talk about getting big level, if you talk about growing to a certain place, there's certain things you're going to have to have in place. And that you can plan your time, whether it's I don't care if you're married and planning date nights. And those things, planning time with your children, we're planning times of vacation, planning times of rest and relaxation, that every quarter you're doing something. And so that you're not just working, 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 but don't know how to rest. And so that you're still accomplishing what God called you to do, but you're still enjoying the journey along the way. So that's what I'm talking about, learning how to enjoy the journey and not being stressed out about stuff that you shouldn't be stressed out about. That is not worth being stressed out. My pastor dealing with now learning, he'll just start talking about contentment and learn how to be content over the past few weeks or so and dealing with contentment. And so, but, but not, you got to learn how to be content, but not complacent, not being slothful, slack or lazy or unproductive, but yet at the same time, knowing how to, ha how to have the right attitude at the current season or state that you're in, knowing that my work ethic, my belief system, whatever it is, is helping me to get to that next place. You know, I, I am where I am right now, but I'm not always going to be here, but I'm going to have the right attitude while I'm here. I'm going to enjoy life while I'm here. I'm not going to let this situation does not have to be this stressful. I don't have to allow it to get to me. It is OK. 
I'm going to chill. I'm going to relax. So what? I didn't have the money at that moment to go out to the movies. I rent a, instead of going and spending $20 on popcorn and drinks and $11 on the ticket, I rented me a $5.99 movie and opened up a, uh, got a package of popcorn, put it in the microwave, sat on my sofa and chilled. And I still enjoyed the movie. Hey, don't trip out right now. Do what you can where you are and learn how to enjoy yourself and enjoy your life. Glory to God, man. That's it. I got it done tonight. That's what I'm supposed to talk to you about tonight. You got it. Don't worry about it. Don't stress out about it. God's got you. He loves you and he wants you to be successful. He wants you to achieve everything you desire and release your faith now. Continue to work on your faith and release your faith. But no, hey, the, what are the steps, the natural practical steps that I can take? But now with this will come the acceleration. It will come the catch up where as you start moving towards it, the wind of God, the blessing of God, the strength and the might of God will begin to help accelerate and get you further along than you thought it would take. And so my faith is in agreement with you to get it done now in Jesus name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. I pray that this word has encouraged your people. And I also pray that you will begin to show them, reveal unto them the pieces of the puzzle, the things that they need to put in place, the areas they need to work on individually. And Father, show us those areas that we need to work on individually in our lives to better ourselves and to grow in the things of you. And so we bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Listen, while you're out there, if there's anybody that's never made Jesus the Lord of their life and you want to today, I want to give you an opportunity to get born again. The Bible declares that if you believe with your, uh, your heart, the Lord Jesus, that he died for you, he was raised from the dead, that God raised him from the dead for you, that you shall be saved. He says, for what the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So I want you to do this with me real quick. I want you to just simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I give my life to you. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus name. Amen. Now, I want you to also say this, say, Holy Spirit. Come inside me now. I receive you now. You're now on the inside of me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance in Jesus name to assist me, to help me to comfort me and to strengthen me, to show me things to come. I acknowledge you, Holy Spirit, to live, to abide and to dwell in me. In Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. See, you're born again and filled with his spirit. The Bible declares you have the ability to speak with other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. The Holy Spirit will assist you and help you. Even as in your private time, in your private prayer time, you can open up your mouth, begin to add voice and the Holy Spirit will give you words, words that don't come out of your natural vernacular, or your um, dialect, but words out of your spirit. That now, just like I'm talking in English, I can go over into the spirit. Wait a minute, what's happening now? My spirit, by the Holy Spirit within me, prays. And so now he assists me and helps me to pray in other tongues. And so it's a faith. It's a faith walk because I'm trusting and believing that the Holy Spirit is going to assist me and help me when I pray like this. And you can do that every single day. And then you can become more proficient and fluent in it. That each and every day as you pray, you begin to grow. So I'm believing God with you and for you to do that as well. 
Also, if you don't have a church home and you desire to connect with this ministry, yes, we may be located here in the Richmond, Virginia area, but we also have our e-church um, family where people in other states that they're still connected with this ministry. We've had members to move to other states and they still want to remain connected as members. And they're still members of this ministry and considered members of this work. And they're assisting us and helping us in getting this vision done and accomplished. Now, there may be somebody you say, well, I already have a church home, um, but I still like what you're doing. I want to support what you're doing. You can become a partner with this ministry. So even with our members, we like to call them partners as well because they're doing this thing with us. We're doing this together and we're co-laborers in the body of Christ. And so what you would do, you was like, you know what? I want to commit to praying for this ministry, supporting this ministry, sowing and giving into this ministry to get the thing done, the vision accomplished and done that God has called and created you to do. Hey, we're believing God for some great things. God has already laid on my heart some projects, some things that I'll be sharing about more. As one I've already shared about is believing for um, a box truck for us to carry and to do things for mobile ministry and outreaches and traveling and doing some other things. So even with uh, us being mobile um, now, as we're believing for a more permanent facility, um, that whatever we need to do so that we can come together in fellowship. And so I was like, God, like, wait a minute, we need a place for us. What, what you mean? And I just believe it was on my heart. And it was just so strong that it came to me. I was like, I just wrote it down and I told my wife. And then I got a picture of the truck. And so what we're going to start doing is we're going to start showing the picture. We used to do this back in the day when we believe God for our um, van. Uh, we first bought our church van. And so, um, and we'll be leaving for the money to raise the money to get it done. And I just learned this from my past and how he began to do it. We began to stretch our hands towards that picture. And we said, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive this van paid in full. And so there was a certain amount that we had set. And it's like, okay, we are sewing. And we ended up paying cash for that van. And so listen, the same way we did it when we had first enhanced and got some equipment for our media ministry and, and, and computers and, and camera and all of that. The first camera, I think, that we purchased like that. And so it was a um, the, the money just came on in. People were sowing and giving towards it. It was a faith project. And so every time we set out a faith project that, hey, we want to make sure that we got this thing done and we got it done. And so we want to make sure that we stay on board and that we stay on point with this. And so we're believing that we receive the monies in for this truck. And so we're doing some research to see the actual size and everything. And so we're believing exactly for our faith. Um, we've already had some people say, hey, Pastor, I think I, I saw a truck here or I saw this. And it's like people are they're out there looking. And so even where our building is concerned, we want you all to stay in faith with us for the right facility. We're working with a realtor and a company and they're being a blessing um, to us. And we're just working together and just looking out uh, from some areas for us to begin to worship office spaces. Um, we can have more permanent, stable um, facilities. And so we're believing God for that. So we are asking that you stay in faith with us um, for that process. And I'll share a lot more. Um, so far as maybe some target numbers, things of that nature, uh, where our giving is concerned. And so this, I believe, would be a time of tremendous generosity in giving, even as we just having a freedom in giving and loving God and honoring God um, with our substance. And so we, that's a perfect segue. This is a time at what we like to call opportunity for prosperity, that we honor God with our giving, honor God with our gifts, love, gifts of love. And so if you desire to sow into this ministry, you, um, there's some information coming up on your screen, uh, different ways in which you can sow. There's a QR code you can scan. It'll take you to a secured page. And so uh, if you can do that as God leads you and guides you and directs you, whatever he tells you to give, give. Amen. In proportion to how God has been blessing you. Hey, give in response to that. And God will cause men to give into your bosom. Hey, listen, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. He says, as a man purposeth in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, because God loves a cheerful giver. A cheerful, happy, hilarious, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And God said, I'll make all grace abound towards you, that you have an all sufficiency and all things will abound to every good work. All right. So we are in faith with you. So at this time, you can sow and you can give, whether it's via cash app, text message, uh, going to the website and so on. However you want to do it, that information is on your screen. 
All right, y'all, I'm out of time. Certainly not out of message. I pray that this has been a blessing to you to motivate, to encourage, to inform, and to inspire. And so this is Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia, with Spirit of Fire Fellowship, where we're changing the culture, igniting a passion, and living a dream. May the grace and peace of God be upon you. May great favor shine upon you and your family. May the angels of God watch over you to keep you, to protect you, and guard you in everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you. See you next time. Peace.